Japanese consumers are keeping their wallets closed. A tax hike in October has slowed down their appetite to shop. That's led to the economy's worst contraction in almost six years in the last quarter of 2019. GDP shrank 1.6% from the previous quarter, or more than 6% when measured annually. That's mainly due to a sales tax that was hiked from 8 to 10% in October. It cut consumer spending by nearly 3% for the quarter. The economy took another battering from Typhoon Hagibis, which hit large parts of the country and disrupted supply chains. Grappling with both the typhoon's aftermath and the effects of the tax hike, the government had tried to boost growth with a massive $120 billion spending package it approved in December. But that was before the coronavirus outbreak. Japan is the country most affected by the epidemic besides China, where the virus emerged. It's already killed more than 1,700 people, and economists believe it will take a big bite out of Japan's tourism industry. I estimate its economic impact over February and March will be just less than $1.8 billion. Chinese tourists make up a third of Japan's foreign visitors, and their absence could affect major events if the epidemic isn't contained soon. If the virus continues, the number of tourists from China to Japan will decrease. An increase in revenue of about $18.4 billion is expected during the Olympics in July and August. But a few percent of that figure will be lost if the virus drags on. Organizers of the Summer Olympics in Tokyo say the Games will go ahead. At the same time, the government has cancelled other events, including the Emperor's birthday celebrations next week, and limited the Tokyo Marathon to only top-level runners to contain the spread of the virus. To help businesses struggling due to the outbreak, the government has announced another $96 million emergency package. But with the world's third biggest economy in a vulnerable condition, that package may not be enough to avoid a recession. Sibel Karkush, TRT World. Well, for more on this, Asia political risk analyst Ross Feingold joins us now from Taipei. Welcome back to the program, Ross. Now, when Prime Minister Shinzo Abe raised the sales tax to 8% back in 2014, the economy shrank 7.3%. Has he simply failed to learn from the lessons of the not-so-distant past? Uh, whether it's the sales tax or other economic or foreign policy issues, the challenge for the prime minister is to balance a number of very important competing priorities. And it's not like he could put one aside. So whether it's an uh, aging society that requires additional investment in elder care or it's uh, defense concerns because of the threats from North Korea or expectations from the United States that Japan will shoulder more of the cost for its defense. Uh, you can't put aside one or the other. And then there's these unexpected events that have occurred in recent years, whether it was the major typhoon in 2018, Typhoon Jebi or uh, Typhoon Hagibis in 2019, and now the unexpected virus outbreak. So uh, it makes it also makes it difficult for him to do long-term planning uh, about how, how to ameliorate the impact of, of the uh, tax increase, which frankly is needed, not just for some of the priorities that I mentioned, but also because of J Japan's enormous accumulated debt. Uh, but these unexpected events also make uh, his decision-making even more of a challenge. So, yeah, it, it's fair to ask, uh, did he not learn anything from what happened when they last raised the tax? Uh, but on the other hand, he does have to confront some realities as well. Yes, just on the coronavirus. Now, some economists predict that that outbreak may tip the Japanese economy over the edge. Do you think Japan will fall into a recession in the next quarter? It, it looks highly likely. And, and Japan, like other countries here in Asia, was also confronting the challenges of the trade disputes and, and changes to supply chains, movement of companies out of China. So uh, very few countries in, in Asia had a, a rosy outlook for the first few quarters of 2020 anyway. But again, like other places in the region, whether it's Hong Kong or, or Korea or countries in Southeast Asia, if the virus contributes to Japan falling into recession in first quarter 2020, it, it certainly will not be a surprise.
So how do the latest GDP figures uh, reflect in terms of uh, Shinzo Abe's so-called Abenomics, his economic manifesto? Well, just like the past sales tax increase and the question of whether or not anything was learned, uh, the, the other side of the equation, it seems that past attempts to spur domestic spending and, and encourage economic growth that way through infrastructure spending, for example, uh, government subsidies of various kinds, those also don't often seem to work in Japan. The, the Japanese consumer remains fairly conservative, notwithstanding uh, government incentive programs. So Japan uh, is highly reliant on exports. It runs a trade surplus with many of its trading partners. Uh, China is an important trading partner, as is the United States. And, and Japan is typically or historically, it's been a big advocate for global trade liberalization. And we know that, that that's not necessarily uh, policies that the United States is pursuing at this time. But Japan has been a, a big advocate for what was the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It's now known as the CPTPP. I think Japan will continue to encourage trade agreements with its okay. neighbors uh, here in Asia, as well as uh, with the UK now that Brexit is completed, uh, and, and continue to rely on exports, notwithstanding whatever talk they may give to encouraging domestic spending. But uh, all these challenges that Japan is facing economically or on the security side in 2020, th the good news is that Japan is hosting the Olympics, as the report discussed. And, and uh, as long as the virus situation has improved by then, uh, the expectation is that the Olympics will, will be a very positive event and bring a lot of economic spending, whether uh, domestic tourists or mm. uh, the, the large number of foreigners who are going to come to Japan for the Olympics. Yes, and in the meantime, all eyes will be on those next GDP figures. Ross Feingold in Taipei, thank you again for your analysis.